we are going to go ahead and Jim, you will be first. So Jim, you have five minutes to tell us who you are, a little bit about why you're running, whatever you want to share with everybody else. Well, thank you very much. I am the senior member of the Mount Hood Community College Board of Education. I was elected to my first term in 2013 and then reelected four years later with the support of the full-time and part-time faculty associations as well as the Classified Employees Association. My wife and I have been associated with Mount Hood Community College for 25 years. And in fact, I had served as a foundation volunteer until the time I was elected to the board. And in fact, my wife and I for the last eight years have been financial sponsors of the Mount Hood Community uh, Foundation Auction, which is a very important uh, entity that supports student scholarships. And we just finished a very successful auction this year. Unfortunately, it had to be virtual rather than in person, but we overcame that obstacle uh, very handily. Uh, my background is one that endorsed, endorsed me to pursue education because I had been a community college graduate. If it hadn't been for community college, I probably wouldn't have advanced to higher education. And because of that, uh, I feel a kinship with students who are entering into uh, a community college uh, endeavor. More importantly, I endorse and support CTE education. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running for a third term because many of the members of the Gresham community, a business community, asked me to continue my support of career and technical education. That is an essential uh, function of Mount Hood Community College we do have articulation agreements with four-year colleges, but it has been proven that a student can go through one of our CTE programs and enter into a very profitable vocation. Uh, my zone is zone two. I represent Damascus, Boring, Sandy, and the Mount Hood corridor up to and including government camp. Uh, it's been a challenging eight years since I've been on the board. And rather than take any time right now to answer the, the questions which Lynn is going to propose to all of us, I think I will just rest my case at this point in time. Lynn, you're muted. Lynn, you're on mute. <laughs> Okay, let's start all over again. Hi, I'm Lynn Snodgrass, the CEO of the Gresham. No, I'm teasing. Thank you for that. Um, all right, we are going now to the next candidate at Mount Hood Community College, and it is Marie Toon. Good morning, Marie. Good morning. Thank you. Um, well, uh, probably a lot of you in the Gresham area don't know who I am, but I've been um, very active in the Oregon Trail School District in the Sandy community for about 40 years as far as um, being involved in the school district in one capacity or another. And also um, as a real estate broker, I'm uh, in touch with the community all the time. Um, I do not have the credentials that James has with the experience with the college at all, but um, just to be quite simple, my goal here would just be to um, make a better connection or to pursue better connections with uh, between the college and the students in the Oregon Trail School District. Um, being on the board for, I think I'm on my sixth year now in the, with the um, Oregon Trail School Board and also president of the Oregon Trail Education Foundation uh, over the years. Um, I think about 20 years I've been involved as the, the chairperson of that foundation. Uh, we've done many, many projects in the community. Um, I'm very active in the community. And um, one of the reasons I'm, I'm running is because uh, the people, up in the Sandy community, up in, in, in the uh, Welch's community up there. Also, I've been approached by uh, parents um, to, to uh, take a position on this board or run for a position on this board uh, to make, just basically try to get some more connection. When my uh, older boys graduate, I have four children that I raised in the district. Uh, three of the four did attend Mount Hood Community College and I was a little more involved back then. When my boys um, graduated from Sandy, they took uh, 
several classes at Mount Hood and Mount Hood was a lot more visible. The college was a lot more visible at the high school back then. That was like 2000, probably 2002 to 2007 or eight uh, by the time my last child graduated. And it just seems like there's been um, a lack of that for several years uh, in, in talking to people. And so mainly just my goal would just to be getting a little more visible out this way. Um, I know that, uh, that Gresham is very, very active, um, actively involved with the college, but I, I just feel like we need to be a, a little more present um, with a college that is so close to us. So many of our students end up going to Clackamas Community College. I'd like to see them go to Mount Hood. So. That's about Thank it. You. Hey, you, you both are doing very well. You're very succinct. All right. So now we're going to go to the Gresham Barlow School District candidates. And Robin, you're going to start. Um, my apologies for the technical difficulties that we had to get you in. It's, it's very embarrassing. I'm sorry. And wouldn't you know, we draw your name first. I drew every name out of the hat and your name was first. So Robin, what is happening now is you're going to give the audience five minutes um, of your time and explain to them why you're running, all about you, whatever you want to share. After everybody is done speaking, then we will ask, then I will ask you the question that I sent you earlier. So there we go. All right, Robin, you've got five minutes. Well, thanks for having me. I'm just very lucky today. <laughs> Um, it is uh, a great opportunity to speak to the chamber. I come from a family of small business owners and my great grandparents opened up their business in 1928 and that's still family owned and operated. And my parents have been local business owners for 25 years. We have always been big fans and supporters of local business. And when I told my father that my opponent was Holly Regelman, he laughed and told me how he's purchased all of our furniture from Regelman's and how he spent two months on a massive state-of-the-art home entertainment system, which took up the entire living room. So we're... Uh, Presenting at the chamber is a great opportunity for me. I grew up in Gresham. I went to East Gresham Elementary School, Kelly Creek, um, and Gordon Russell. So Gresham is my home. I joined the school board because I was asked by my community. I was told that my experience in institutional equity and organizational development would be useful in our district. And 10 months in, I see that our board needs a lot of help in these areas. I speak a lot about equity and you can learn more about my equity platform in the voter pamphlet statement or on my social media pages. But today I thought I would speak more about organizational development and leadership and how that is foundational into making change. Um, the number one community frustration with our school district this year has been the board's lack of leadership and engagement during this pandemic. I myself was very astonished when I went into the first meeting when we had over 20 public comments and there was no opportunity for people to speak. And I used that time um, or my time during that meeting uh, to, to uh, be able to acknowledge all the speakers. And then at that time I requested that the board explore more inclusive engagement practices. And this is something that we have yet to work on. Our families, our students, our teachers are struggling and they need to be heard and engaged um, in this process and be uh, included in comprehensive creative solutions. There is no conflict between in-person learning and comprehensive distance learning. We can do both and we can do both safely. And we need the entire community to work together on this. Uh, to clarify some of the issues, uh, the board chair sets the agenda, which dictates what the board will work on or what we won't work on. Uh, currently, we have a list of about 20 requested items that have never made it to the agenda in the last 10 months. And this is not an inclusive process and practice, and it makes it very difficult to engage with the community and meet our goals. In the last 10 months, uh, we were only brought forward to return to learn agenda items for vote, uh, and they both had to deal with the schedule. Um, the first vote uh, made uh, 
allowed that teachers were going to come back before being fully vaccinated. And I was able to successfully advocate to give teachers the opportunity to become fully vaccinated before returning to classroom. And I thought that was very important. I want the kids to return to classroom. I just want it to be done in the safest way possible. Um, for the second vote around the schedule, I had to abstain because I didn't have enough information. Right before approving this return to learn schedule, we had received about 100 comments from our teachers begging us not to return to the classrooms. Um, as business owners, you might understand this. What would you do if 100 employees came to you or wrote you right before a major decision and asked you not to make that decision? I just did not have the, enough information to go into that meeting and make the vote, and therefore I had to abstain. And my advocacy for the teachers has earned me um, the endorsement of the Gresham Education Association and the Oregon Education Association. And as a major employer in, the, in this community, I'm very proud of that. Um, one positive thing about this pandemic, it, it's motivated some individuals to step up into leadership positions and become more engaged in the school district. We need to build on this energy and we cannot have systems that exclude the voices of students, teachers, and families. Uh, we cannot have uh, systems that are culturally exclusive and we cannot have systems that lack leadership. If these voices are engaged, included from the beginning, we could have developed a lot more better processes moving forward. So thank you. Thank you, Robin. I'm assuming you saw the one minute sign. I did. Okay. <laughs> Was I on time? <laughs> yes, you were You were perfectly fine, but that was another thing for, um, again, the technical difficulty. I'm not sure that, that, that you got that information. So thank you. So number two that's gonna to speak today is Jeff Jones. Jeff, have yes, it at your, the floor is yours. Nice to meet you, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Jones. I was born and raised out here uh, in Damascus, Gresham area. Um, my dad had a, his own personal I guess you could count a small business as a dentist. He was a dentist for 44 years and uh, taught me, you know, in the mornings you get up, eat your Cheerios and you go to work and you come back at 530 and take care of your family and kids. And uh, I ended up getting into the electrical union uh, at the age of 19 and uh, climbed my way up to a position of superintendent uh, with a company that I eventually left because I wanted to see more of my wife and kids. Um, I started my own business here in uh, Troutdale almost five years ago. It's a small one-man uh, owner-operator shop and uh, wanted to be part of my community uh, as a small business. I was part of the boundary committee uh, for Gresham Barlow with West Gresham, you know, coming to a close and worked with uh, Mr. Milliken uh, from East Orient. And the reason that I'm running was because I saw other people uh, such as Holly Regelman and Blake um, you know, good people in our community and, and they had a voice. And I actually thought that our zone with Holly Regelman, she had, you know, already gone in and I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to run. So anyhow, uh, another person that's running, Adam Sorensen, he said, hey, there's some at-large positions and I really wanted to get involved. And, and so here we are today. And I feel one of the biggest issues, uh, in my opinion, uh, is getting the kids back to school full time. I think they, you know, like pre-pandemic, uh, that's where I really feel they need to be. Um, I think one of the most important things uh, that Gresham Barlow has to offer is their AVID program. Um, you know, starting off at uh, the fifth grade level, working all the way through their senior year in high school. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, you know, see some of those things really work with some of my cousins. And, and uh, I think for responsibility and accountability uh, for becoming an adult, um, if you plan on going into an early career or, you know, going into college, it's, it's, it's really good for, for that prep. Um, one of your questions uh, was about the speed bump. And I, I feel that we're going to have a really hard time getting our kids reacclimated um, in possibly a sh very short period of time. And I think it's going to take more time than people think. Uh, the, the next thing you had there was... Um, the questions regarding the, the future superintendent. And I'm thinking on that, that uh, maybe we should have uh, a background check on the actual actions um, and, and what they've shown in their past 
or what their aspirations are and maybe a little less social media and a little bit more community involvement. I don't want somebody just to show up and leave. I want somebody to show up and do. There's a lot of talk and not a lot of action. And I think if, uh, if you've got some background where you can you know, build yourself to a certain position, either academically um, or business-wise, that will show itself in the community. That's all I've got. Well, thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm going to ask you those questions again later. You get to tell them. You get to tell us again. So there you go. Our next speaker today is Dr. Myra Gomez. Thank you, Myra. Thank you. Um, so I'm Myra Gomez. I um, I graduated from Roosevelt High School in North Portland. So I'm a rough writer. I'm very proud. I am a first generation. Um, college graduate in my family. So uh, my, I'm the first one in my family to be born in the United States, the first to graduate from high school and proudly to say that I have uh, two college degrees, like a master's degree and a doctorate degree. So I think I exemplify uh, the American dream. Um, my dad was able to attend kindergarten for a week and then uh, his mother found out and he was punished because that was a week of salary that the family had lost. So I grew up believing in education as an equalizer. Um, unfortunately, right now, not all of our students are receiving that same opportunity. So uh, I, when I was asked to, to be on the board, um, I did it with that in mind, that I want every student to have the same opportunities that I had growing up, knowing that despite my struggles um, and challenges, those became assets. That those those challenges that I faced are what make me who I am today. Uh, so I don't regret any of that. I'm actually very thankful for those. I've had great mentors, teachers that believed in me growing up. So as a teacher, I hope to be able to provide that same opportunity. There's a fire drill going on. Uh, the same opportunity to my students. Um, and um, hopefully I don't have to evacuate. Uh, and then, I, you know, I... I bring my, my experience as an educator, but my experience, as I said before, as a first-gen student, I represent the communities that we're serving. We have a large um, refugee population, a large uh, Latino population. We have uh, a very diverse community. And, um, and I share uh, that lived experience with them. I live in a multi-generational family. So uh, during this pandemic, um, I saw how privileged I am. I've known of my privileges, but they were really highlighted this time because um, living in a multi-general family provided me the support, the emotional support to go through this experience. Um, and also I saw firsthand how families were being affected um, because of this pandemic. So I really do think that um, I'm, I believe I'm very blessed in that I, I live with my family. I live with, with two adorable children. Um, and so those experiences are the same that I, that I share with with the Latino community, with many of the families that we serve. And I've had the opportunity to, uh, to hear directly from our families of what they want and how we can serve them better. Um, empowering our students, listening to their voices is part of what guides um, my decision-making, how I vote. I want to hear directly from staff. I ask to hear directly from kids. I meet with parents when I want to know more about what, they, what they're experiencing and what they want us to do. So um, I don't just take, I don't take decisions lightly. Um, and I, as a teacher and, and a community member, I advocate for everyone to have um, the opportunities for post-secondary preparation, whether it's CTE, whether it's college readiness, every child should be given the opportunity to choose and not be tracked and not be told what's best for them. Every kid should graduate from high school with that preparation to make their own choice. So thank you for the opportunity today. All right, you get the award for overcoming the worst distraction ever. Um, I I'm, so I'm a teacher. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that, um, for, for that interruption that you had, but thank you for that. Um, and the audience I'm sure heard a very concentrated kind of person with what you had to go through. Our next our next speaker today, next candidate today is Julie Fediani. Fediani. 
Yes. You I wanted to say Fridiani, but you corrected me. So now I'm really messing this up. Julie Frediani. Okay. Very well done. Thank you. Julie, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I want to thank the chamber for um, hosting this event today. And I am really excited to actually see other um, people that are running for school board and, and uh, I'm excited um, to be here. So I am Julie Frediani. I grew up in the Gresham area. I, um, I guess I'm so old that I used to pick berries at Schott's Berry Farm, but, <laughs> but um, that was my first job was picking, picking berries in Gresham. And um, so I have been very active in this community all of my life. I uh, raised three boys. They went to Centennial and Gresham schools. Um, and they are now, um, one is a uh, Chinook. He works on a Chinook as a mechanic and he's stationed in Germany right now with the army. Uh, another one is a mechanic for uh, TriMet. And then my third son, um, he has struggled with some mental health issues and we have just been walking that journey, but he is um, really making it and doing his best and lives in uh, the Portland area. So I have uh, one grandchild on the way and one seven-year-old granddaughter. Uh, so I have been teaching this entire year, even though I am retired, I have um, been asked by the Gresham School District to uh, continue as a substitute. And I've also been teaching a K-1 cohort out of my home. Um, and I have five kids in that cohort. And so on, I have taught the um, distance learning and been online with kids this year. I've been in person with kids. I um, work at Hollydale when I don't have my cohort and I've been working every afternoon teaching a three, four blend. And so we have, I know what it looks like. I know what, um, how kids are and how they've been affected. And I know what we need to do to make next year and the years following, uh, good for students, good for all kids. And I am very, I guess, um, one of my platforms is equity. I've been um, really interested in helping uh, marginalized students and families and making sure that everybody is served equally. And I, my granddaughter's biracial. And so um, I know that she will have different hurdles that she has to overcome in life um, as a young black woman. And so I, have been very invested in making sure that I'm educated and that I am working for all kids, black kids, brown kids, white kids. And I think that with my vast experience working with children in the classroom and all of my education and just my viewpoint on life, I think I have a lot that I can give the board. I have a good perspective and I have a lot of knowledge. So hopefully you'll vote for me. <laughs> um, I've been endorsed by Stanford Children, um, the uh, classified workers at Gres through Gresham Barlow and um, Carla Peluso. So we've had some good talks and I am just really proud that she has um, chosen, even though she's withdrawn, to throw her support behind me. And I'm, I'm grateful to her for that and her service. Great, Julie. Thank you very much. The next candidate that we're going to hear from is Holly Riegelman. Holly, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. I'm having some uh, technical difficulties, so hope you lose me. Um, good morning, and 
Thank you for hosting this. Thank you also for anyone um, taking the time out of your day to listen. Um, I would love to quickly share a little bit about myself and also ask for your vote. Um, running for the school board was not something I had planned on doing. Uh, prior to the pandemic, I was happily volunteering in my children's classrooms, attending field trips, helping schools through fundraisers, and generally helping the teachers in any way I could. Um, I grew up in Gresham. I've lived here my entire life. I attended Powell Valley, Gordon Russell, and Sam Barlow. I loved my time in all of these schools. I had some of the very best teachers. I participated in various sports and activities, and I even met my husband at Barlow. Um, following high school, I worked in a medical office, and in 2004, my husband Mike and I got married. That fall, he began coaching water polo for Barlow, and we had no kids at that time, so we began investing our lives in his team. Uh, one of the ways we did this was to host an end-of-the-season dinner, um, and in 2006, we had our oldest son, Levi, and have four children of our own, two boys, two girls, uh, ages 13, 11, and 9. Um, Mike is now in his 17th year. We've continued to invest in the lives of student athletes. They've become part of our family. In fact, two weeks before the due date of our first child, I was cheering for Mike's team while having contractions on the sidelines. So um, very involved. Uh, his teams threw us baby showers and I found members of athletes challenging me to a game of ping pong when I was nine months pregnant. Um, our kids have grown up at the Barlow pool. They um, love the water, but they will also remember the team dinners in our home and the relationships we have formed over the years with literally hundreds of students. Uh, those athletes treated our kids like family, and they're all aware that they're part of our family. They're always welcome. Holly, you're frozen. There we go. Nope, you're still frozen. Uh, we love hosting the kids in our home, and they beg to come over. I'm sorry. Where did Can you hear me? Or... You're you're cutting in and out, Holly. Can you hear me better if I don't have my video on? A little bit right now. Okay. Where about did you lose me? About 30 seconds ago. Okay. Um, I will open Gresham. Does that sound okay? Yep. So, yes, better. Okay. Um, I grew up in Gresham. I've lived here my entire life and I attended Powell Valley, Gordon Russell, and Sam Barlow. I loved my time in all of these schools. I had some of the very best teachers. I participated in various sports and activities, and I even met my husband at Barlow. Following high school, I worked in a medical office, and in 2004, my husband, Mike, and I got married. That fall, he began coaching water polo for Barlow. We had no kids yet, and so we began investing in the lives of his team. One of the ways we did this was to host an end-of-the-season end team dinner. In 2006, we had our oldest son, Levi, and we now have four children of our own, two boys and two girls, ages 14, 13, 11, and 9. Mike is now in his 17th year of coaching, and we have continued to invest in the lives of student athletes. They have become part of our family. In fact, two weeks before the due date of our first child, I was cheering for Mike's team while having contractions on the sidelines. His team threw us baby showers, and I have found memories of athletes challenging me to a game of ping pong when I was nine. Our kids have grown up in the Barlow Pool and they love the water, but they also always remember the team dinners in our home and the relationships we have formed over the years with literally thousands of students. Those athletes treated our kids like family and they are all aware that they are part of our family. They know they're always welcome in our home and they can call my cry at any time. Um, I'll just skip down. Um, this community is our family. As many of you know, we also own a family business in Gresham where I work for a time as a bookkeeper. We have strong connections to our community and are deeply invested in the future of Gresham Barlow School District. We care not only for our children, but all of the children who make up this incredible district. My kids are constantly amazed that I know the parents, not the grandparents of their friends or teammates they have just met. I love that about this community. Families like ours are invested in taking care of each other as they have been for generations. This last year, however, has challenged us immensely. For me personally, has highlighted the need to not only be involved on the parent level by volunteering, going on field trips and as a coach's wife, which are things I'll all continue to do, but also at the school board level where major decisions about our schools are being made. This year, more than so, any Holly, other year, I, yes. I, 
yeah, unfortunately, the t the time is um, has expired for your five minutes. I'm not exactly sure if it's on your end or our end um, that that the problem occurred. Um, Probably mine. Um, you you sound fine right now. So again, I'm not sure exactly what it what happened. Um, I I continued the recording just so everybody knows. I don't know what happens if you stop the recording if that would have changed the sound or not. I'm not technically capable to make that decision. So um, what we're going to do now is go to Blake Peterson, who, there we go. Blake, you may know better how to maneuver this, but I'm not going to ask you because you might bill me for it and it's not in the budget. So Blake Peterson, uh, you are the last candidate to speak this morning before we start the question. The floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lynn, and thanks to the chamber for hosting it. And thanks for everybody who's who's listening in. Um, my name is Blake Peterson. I'm I'm currently serving on the Gresham Barlow board in position five, which is a, a zoned position that represents uh, the Powell Valley and Kelly Creek neighborhoods. Um, I am uh, I'm married to my wonderful wife, Stephanie. Together, we have four kids of our own. Um, all four are students in the Gresham Barlow district. In addition, we're uh, foster parents for three additional ones. So out of the seven kids that we have in our home, six of them are students in our schools, um, five of them in elementary and one of them in middle school. Um, and we also have a two-year-old. So um, I, I love this community. Uh, it is uh, home, always has been home in my life. I graduated from Barlow in 2003. So did my wife, Stephanie. Um, after Barlow, I accept an appointment to West Point. I graduated from there in 2007 and commissioned as an intelligence officer in the US Army. Um, I was on active duty for five years. Um, I held a variety of leadership and analytical roles uh, there and, and those experiences have carried throughout my career. Um, uh, they also included a, a combat deployment for a year uh, when our oldest son was two months old is when I left and got home when he was 14 months old. So uh, he's now a sixth grader in our schools. and. Um, uh, after we transitioned out of the Army, um, I had the privilege of, of being the first executive director for the Good News Community Health Center, which is a, a nonprofit work in the Rockwood neighborhood. Um, I was there for six years. Uh, we provided thousands of uh, medical and behavioral health visits for um, vulnerable neighbors. 100% uh, of them were dealing with poverty of some respect. Uh, over 50% of them were conducted in a language other than English. Um, 15 to 20% were for undocumented neighbors. Um, a number of them, as well as our, our concentrated outreach efforts were for homeless neighbors. And um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about our community. And I learned a lot about the experiences of my neighbors in those six years. Um, uh, three years ago, I left that position to take a job at the city of Gresham, where I'm uh, currently a management analyst for uh, the Department of Environmental Services, which provides our transportation uh, and utility services, including water and wastewater and stormwater, as well as the equipment replacement fund. Um, I, uh, I handle the budget process so um, for uh, or support the budget process for those divisions. Um, somehow that uh, shared experiences and collection of perspectives uh, compelled me four years ago to run for board and, and I was proud to be selected by by my neighbors uh, who voted for me and I'm, I'm seeking it again because we have a tremendous uh, a burden ahead of us. Um, I have lived the experiences of our families whose kids have been deprived of their classrooms. I understand it intimately. Um, not only that, I understand in the case of my foster children exactly how catering to adult comforts has robbed our children of critical supports. Um, I, uh, for that reason, um, I have advocated for return to classrooms, not neglecting the safety of our staff, but following the CDC recommendations for our staff, um, who uh, said repeatedly that it was a safe environment to return our, our educators to classrooms. Um, we did, we were able to expedite the vaccination process in our state. We knew that that was underway. And so I was, um, I, I was completely supportive of a return to hybrid instruction as quickly as possible, uh, knowing the ramifications that were ahead of us. And that's what we have ahead of us. 
uh, we know that the students and families most affected by our, our move to comprehensive distance learning are the families who have the least voice, um, families of students experiencing disabilities, uh, families of English language learners. These are the students whose opportunity loss is most severe in our district. We know that. Um, so any conversation about equity has to start with a return to in-person learning. Um, I look forward to answering some more questions and I, I hope to get your votes. Thank you all. I want to compliment all of you for navigating um, all the things that we're going through today. Blake finished his little um, his conversation by advocating we all get back in person, and I would like to get back in person for things like this. Um, we won't have nearly the complications once we uh, can see each other face to face. So we're going to go now into the question period. You have. A, because all of you did so well and didn't use all of your five minutes, we're going to have a little bit extra time for questions. So that's a good thing. You've got 30 seconds to answer the question, and uh, we're going to we're going to go in order again. Um, we're going to start with the Gresham Barlow folks, and it'll be Robin and then Jeff. So Robin, the first question, and again, you'll all have 30 seconds to answer it. What is the most important issue, in your opinion, that Gresham Barla will face in the next four years, and why? Go ahead. So I think the most important thing that we have to deal with in the next four years is still the pandemic. The health and safety of everyone is very important, and I think it's very important to realize that Full vaccination and safety measures have nothing to do with adult comfort, but has everything to do with the safety of all of our students and families. And advocating for returning to learn during times when it is very unsafe is very irresponsible. So number one, we need to make sure that things are safe. And when we do start the process of returning to learn like we are, it needs to be done in a process of engagement. We need to be engage engaging our families. If we say this is our priorities, we need to have those conversations. We need to include those voices of student teachers and families to make sure that we are returning to learn as soon as possible in the safest way possible. Thank so, you, Robin. Thank you. Can you hear that little beep beep sound? I no? can. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, the same question to Jeff, and then it'll be Myra. Jeff, what is the most important issue, in your opinion, that Gresham Barley will face in the next four years and why? Most important issue um, for me is to have our kids back in school full time as they were pre-pandemic. Okay. That the, was well, very... well the, the, the reason for that is, is because they're suffering, you know, academically, socially, and personally. Okay. That's all I got. Good job, thank you. Okay, Myra and then Julie. Myra, go ahead. What is the most important issue in the next four years and why? In addition to returning to school, I think um, we, we will need to recognize what are the lessons learned from this experience so that we can take those lessons, take the, the positives that come out of this to transform our education system. Um, we know that our education system was not designed for all students to be successful. So this is an opportunity that we can take um, advantage of to transform our education system to make sure that we are serving all of our students. Um, like I mentioned before, providing different opportunities for our students to succeed, um, whatever their definition of success is. We are, it's not our job as educators or as school board members to define what success is for our families. Our families know what success is for them and we should be providing the tools necessary for our students to feel successful and reach their goals, not our goals. So Thank I you. think- um, Thank you, Myra. That's the challenge. Thank you. It's hard being a timekeeper, I'm sorry. It's okay. it's okay. No, it's very hard, I'm sorry. All right. Um, Julie and then Holly. Julie, do I need to repeat the question? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay, there we go. Go ahead. Um, I think the most important um, issue that we're going to face in the next four years after we return full time um, to our schools 
is um, to kind of reimagine what um, educating our students looks like and to make sure that we're bringing our kids um, back their joy and to make sure that kids um, are not given a label of being deficient because of the pandemic and that um, we we welcome them back wherever they are at and let them know that they have learned other things during the pandemic and make sure that we maybe change the scope and sequence that's required at each grade level so that we are engaging our kids where they're at. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. All right, Polly and then Blake. Polly, um, you're muted still. Holly, are you there? I don't see you or your your microphone is still muted. Okay, um, I think we're going to go on to Blake, and if Holly can get her microphone unmuted, then we'll come back to her before we go into the next. Oh, there, Holly, you there? Nope. I just got back in. Am I up? You're on. We'll see if it works. Can you hear now me? There we go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing we're going to face in the near future is getting kids back into school. Currently, um, Gresham has students in school five hours a week um, compared to other districts in the metro area that have kids in person um, 16 hours per week. And I think that we need to make sure that we offer the online and the in-person option for all students um, going forward. So I think we work together to make that happen safely. Thank you, Holly. Blake, do I need to repeat the question? Um, no, no, thank you. Uh, okay. I think I think the most imminent issue we're going to face is hiring our next superintendent, uh, which has huge implications for the organization. But um, I think kind of a persistent issue that we're going to face in public education locally, uh, statewide, and even nationally is, is our declining enrollment. Um, there's so many options available in K-12 education, but uh, they're not available to everyone. And for those who do have options, they're increasingly choosing alternatives uh, to, to what we offer. Uh, this has profound social and economic implications that that compromise the promise of public education and our and our vision. Thank you, Blake. Now we're going to go to the Mountain Community College candidates. And uh, I would like to ask you the same question. What is the most important issue, in your opinion, that Mountain Community College will face in the next four years? And we'll start with Jim. Well, it shouldn't surprise anyone that financing is the big issue for Mount Hood Community College. It's a legacy that we've been fighting for some time. The governor's budget that she proposed in November discounted community college education, in fact, reduced our budget below the current level. We are now going to the Legislative Ways and Means Committee to try to rectify that problem. But when we don't have sufficient state support, we have to raise tuition. And I'd like to state that this budget that we have just approved with this board has no tuition increases in its budget. So we are really trying to gird the financial issue and benefit our students. Thank you, Jim. Marie, are you able to answer? Just nod your head. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, do I need to repeat the question? No, no, actually, right. um, uh, I agree 100% with Jim. I, to piggyback on that, I would like to just see that uh, community college does um, that to keep the community college tuitions uh, affordable for our community. Um, we do have a, such a diverse community, uh, you know, out here in Zone Two and everywhere. But when you're talking about um, 
age groups and everything in a, in a college situation. It's not just high school students, it's, it's, um, it's everyone. It's adults, um, elderly, young, old, I mean, for everyone. And to just keep it affordable for everyone over the next four years would be a huge uh, milestone. Great, thank you, thank you all. Okay, we've got time for one more question to keep with the hour that we promised our audience. And I wanna end with a happy question. The question is, what is an accomplishment, a program or a success that most people don't know about Gresham Barlow or about Mount Hood Community College? So this is a brag moment. So having said that, um, we're gonna start again with Robin. Robin, what is an accomplishment, program or success most people don't know about Gresham Barlow? The time is yours. So I'll speak to things that I've accomplished in the last 10 months with policy is we were able to eliminate our victim blaming language from our sexual harassment policy. Um, we were able to replace uh, more punitive authoritarian language in our uh, disciplinary policies with more restorative practice policies. And just recently, um, we've had the first reading at our uh, work session to fly the progressive, flat, progressive pride flag, Black Lives Matter flag to incorporate a land acknowledgement and the Black National Anthem into our processes. I think that these are great in reaffirming student identities. That one is yet to be voted on, but I think that their process are that it's progress and things to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 30 seconds goes so fast, doesn't it? <laughs> It's, it's hard to sound so smart going 30 seconds. You're doing a great job, Robin. All right, uh, Jeff and then Myra. Jeff, what's an accomplishment of programmer's success that most people don't know about Gresham Barlow? I'll repeat myself. It's uh, the AVID program starting off in fifth grade, you know, going through uh, high school. I think it's a great um, program that's able to teach kids responsibility and accountability uh, and prep them for either, you know, an early career fresh out of high school, possibly military for responsibilities or you know, college prep. I think it's really good. Okay, thank you. Julie, uh, then, I'm sorry, Myra, then Julie. Myra? We've adopted culturally responsive teaching practices. We've increased our graduation rates and we've uh, grown our ninth grade. Uh, which have increased the number of students on staff to graduate. Um, and we have also developed uh, business partnerships to develop our CTE programs and offer internships to our students. Uh, and we have continued this growth despite the pandemic. Uh, we've also made many improvements in the use of our technology, moving to one-on-one -on -one, uh, devices for our students. Good job, thank you. Julie, do I need to repeat the question? Uh, no, thanks, I'm good. Um, okay. Myra just helped me segue right into mine because she ended with technology and I was um, <laughs> going to uh, give kudos to the Gresham Barlow School District for um, working with students to get everybody a one-on-one -on -one device, working with um, families to get affordable hotspots or internet during this time. And the board did just recently vote on um, buying new laptops and more Chromebooks so that we can continue to um, do a great job with technology. I also wanted to talk about the tomorrow bus. Um, but your time is up. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It's a great thing. <laughs> okay, you could write it in the chat box if you would okay. like. <laughs> All right, um, now we have, um, after Julie, we have Holly and then Blake. Holly? Um, I'll take the opportunity to bring our student athletes. Um, this year, especially, they have had to roll with so many punches, um, closures, restrictions, regulations, and um, just kudos to them for rolling with those punches and still accomplishing as much as they've been able to accomplish their seasons. Um, thank you. Now, Blake. Um, I, I think the community is well aware of the 2016 bond, but I don't know if they understand uh, fully just the, the heavy lift that the facility staffs and, um, and our district leaders put. Um, in, in summary, we, 
we're going to close these projects, uh, delivering them entirely under budget, ahead of schedule, and accountable to every voter promise from the 16 bond. And taxpayers will pay 10% less than the rate they agreed to. And, and that absolutely has to do with decisions made on the ground by our facilities team, as well as the bond management. So I'm proud of our district leaders for that. Thank you, Blake. Now we're going to go to the Mountain Community College candidates and ask those to the same thing. So Jim, we're going to start with you. What is an accomplishment, a program, or a success most people don't know about Mount Hood Community College? Go ahead. Mount Hood in its first 50 years has graduated 1 million certificate and degree students. And I think that's extremely important. Wow. Thank you. I didn't know that. That's, a, that's great. Okay, Marie. Uh, am I? Um, I think that the college has done a great job of, of uh, keeping nimble enough to handle the competition from online schools. And of course, you know, COVID has helped with that, but. Well, I want to thank all of you. Um, each one of you did an incredible job. You prepared for today very well. Um, you responded very well. The technical skills, I've got wavy lines. I don't know why I have wavy lines. So that was a distraction. Robin couldn't get on and she was first, her name was pulled first and I kept cutting her off because of the timing. And um, Myra, I renamed her earlier in the week. Holly was having a little, she's got a very big bass sound to her on the recording. Um, Marie's got little babies in her arms. So, I mean, all of us went through a whole lot today to be together, but the purpose was to let people know what you are like in real life. And today they got a real life look of our candidates for school board at Gresham Barlow, as well as Bannon Community College. So I wanna encourage all of you to vote. Um, those of you that are, that are listening, please make sure that you look at all the candidates seriously. If you have more questions, get a hold of them. Uh, contact the chamber office. We can get, it, get you the information to get in touch with them. Um, it's, it's, it's accessible. And one last thing, um, we are closed down again on Friday because Multnomah County is into high risk. So please go out today and tomorrow and eat. Um, out. You're going to have e dining in for the next couple of weeks or so. So um, let's let's do everything we can to continue to help our small businesses um, and tell them how much we appreciate all the hard work that they're going through to um, keep us safe and to provide what we need to have. So uh, thank you, uh, Julie and Robin and Jim, Blake, Myra, Marie, Holly, and Jeff, thank you so much for spending time today. Now you can go back to your to your job and uh, continue on with your life. Congratulations, all of you, for running for office, and the meeting is adjourned.